Center for Spiritual Living here in beautiful San Clemente, where the sun shines and the snow is imaginary. We would like you to join us this morning on two carols. The first one is Angels We Have Heard on High. We have our beautiful song leaders over there, Karen and Rick. And away we go. <laughs> To the world. So welcome everyone to the Center for Spiritual Living in beautiful San Clemente. 
To our friends in Arkansas and New York, hi Mary, we're having 70 degrees weather here today. I know yours is 23, but it is a beautiful, that's why they call it the best climate on the planet is in San Clemente. So I am so happy that you are joining us here for this beautiful Sunday morning service where your heart will be opened and you will be just lifted up to a different level this morning. So we're going to start our service like we always do with the flames of faith. And we perform this ceremony to promote the universal consciousness of life, which acknowledges that all peoples and all faiths, all sentient beings come from the one great universal presence that we call spirit. Fundamental to this truth is the unifying nature of all religious thought and experience, which we honor here today. We light the candle for the Tao, honoring the universal path of harmony and equilibrium, the natural way. We light the candle for the shamanic traditions, honoring the beliefs and the practices of all indigenous peoples, the way of primal spirituality. We light the candle for Hinduism, honoring the path of knowledge, action, and devotion. We light the candle for Judaism, honoring the ethical path of living by sacred law. We light the candle for all forms of Buddhism, honoring the Four Noble Truths and the path of compassion. We light the candle for all forms of Christianity, honoring the Christ consciousness as the path of love. We light the candle for all forms of Islam, honoring the path of compliance with the will of God as the highest calling. We light the candle for the universalistic religion of Baha'i, honoring the path of unity and the path of peace. We light the candle for all forms of new thought, honoring the metaphysical path of mental healing through the practice of universal spiritual principles. And as practitioner Rick Dale lights the last candle, let it represent the path that brought you here this morning. Now please join me for an affirmative prayer. In this most sacred and holy moment, we open our hearts, we open our minds to the truth of our being. And that truth is there is truly only one life. It is the life of God and it is our life right here, right now. This divine essence is the first cause to all of creation. It is the yin and the yang it is timeless, spaceless, it is compassion, it is unconditional love, and it is joy, and it is bliss. So all these qualities of God, every single one I've spoken about and every single one that have not been spoken, all the qualities of God reside within each one of us. So that's our purpose. That's our purpose is to be the joy, to be the light, to be the compassion, to be the understanding, to be the gratitude of life. So this morning I affirm and I decree that all is well, that we are lifted up this morning by Dr. Heather's wonderful, inspiring message that we are lifted up by the beautiful music, by the wonderful connection that we have with each other. I can feel it. You can feel it. We are one. And we are the joy of God. And we are here today to express that joy. 
And so knowing that each one of us is awakened, is aware, is alive to this truth, I give great thanks. My heart is full of gratitude for everything I have and everything I don't have. It's a time to be grateful for what we have in this moment. So we open our hearts and we place this word into divine mind where it has already been created. And so I anchor this prayer in the joy of God, in the compassion and love of spirit as we say together, and so it is. And now our affirmation. Together we say, on this day of Advent, I give thanks for the milestones of my life and joyfully celebrate my spiritual evolution. Now our Declaration of Principles. I believe in God, the one creative intelligence operating through the universe and throughout my entire being right now and always. I believe this perfect spirit operates upon a law of mind and creates my experience exactly according to my belief. I believe this perfect creative intelligence can be used by me and by every other person to produce health, abundance and love in mind, body, and total life experience. I use it now, and I rejoice in it, and so it is. We're now going into our meditation time, and we're meditating the meditation song that we're using, the chant, is with spirit. It was written by Ellen D Dale, and so they will lead us in the chant. After the, after the chant, I will lead you in a brief meditation. It will end by the ringing of three strikes of the bell. We'll begin. <laughs> Spirit is all, 
in all, through all, and as all. I invite you to let spirit bring to mind something that was so joyful, a memory, a time, that there was so much joy, you couldn't contain it. It was laugh aloud kind of joy. It was giggling kind of joy. The joy that is just like a brook bubbling down it, itself, it simply does. So in the beingness of joy, let you spend this meditation time just being lifted up and lightened up by that one power that is all good.
gently coming back to the awareness of where you are and bring that bring that memory bring that feeling of joy with you you can use it all day and I'll be talking about it in a few minutes but now Mr. Jimmy Van gorgeous day, <clears throat> I'll even use a mic, this gorgeous day, this wonderful, beautiful service is a great time for all of us to count our blessings. So what did you think of? What did you think of when I directed you to bring to mind a time when you were so joyful that you just giggled or laughed? It just came out. And the, the, the memory that came to me came because of what we're, um, we're talking about. And there were many, but this is, this is one. Um, I'm basing my messages on this sweet little booklet from Unity, which is our sister teaching. And it's called The Spirit of Christmas. And all of the, day, all of the days before Christmas that are Advent days, preparing us for Christmas. 
And today, of course, is, is pre preparing by opening to joy. And the story that they begin with in the little booklet is um, the, the woman who is writing it is a unity minister, and she says the favorite time for her for her for Christmas Eve is when the children um, slowly go by. They have a nativity scene uh, set up. Go by the crash and look in to that cradle. And on the, on, the, um, on the hay in the cradle, instead of seeing a baby doll or a baby, they see a mirror. So they see their own face. Mm -hmm. And starting with the very, from the very youngest, she says they already know that it's right, that it should be their face that they're seeing. And then later on, as they get older, they realize they're seeing the face of God as them. And then they start to understand and realize that everybody is the face of that newborn Christ, is the face of God. Mirror work is so powerful, and it's something I've loved forever. And then coming here, and Reverend Judy has a, a relationship with Louise Hay, who really started people on using the mirror work. But it was part of my memory. In my in my first pulpit ministry, which was here in California, but south of here in San Diego County, in Bonita, we were having a board retreat, and I was leading it, and of course it was just the board members, and including me, and I had set up this labyrinth of uh, various things for them to go to one at a time, and ending with a mirror which I thought would be very significant, very moving, and very um, loving, because I did put face of God beneath the mirrors, and they knew what they were looking into. And every single one, well, I had kind of a crack up guy on the board, and he was the first one that went in the labyrinth, and he came out, and he looked, and he laughed, and he laughed, and he, he just kept laughing, so it kind of wasn't what I had in mind, but it was definitely what Spirit had in mind. And the whole purpose of a board retreat is to lighten up and get to know one another at a deeper level, a more human level, so it actually, it actually even though it wasn't what I had visualized, because I had visualized, you know, weeping and being tender and seeing seeing so so much sweetness within yourself. That isn't what I got. But I got a very good thing. And I think that is one of the ways that we bring joy into our lives, is to claim it everywhere. To say, I'm willing to be the joy of God regardless of what's going on. It is who I am and what I am, and it is right where I am. I brought a couple of other things that I wanted to share this morning. Um, <laughs> yesterday, my, my sister sent me a, an email, I think, how to feed a cat a pill. How to feed a cat a pill. Now, any of you who have, have cats and dogs, you know it's much easier to feed a dog a pill you just do something with it, put it in something, and the dog eats it. But the cat, usually you find those pills somewhere else. And I like this, and it really made me giggle, so I hope you like it also. Here's how to feed a pill to your cat. Pick the cat up and cradle in the crook of your arm as if holding a baby. Position right forefinger and thumb on either side of the cat's mouth and gently apply pressure to cheeks while holding pill in right hand. The cat opens mouth, pop pill into mouth. Allow cat to close mouth and swallow. <laughs> Retrieve pill from the floor and cat from behind the sofa. <laughs> Cradle cat in left arm and repeat process. Retrieve cat from bedroom <laughs> and throw soggy pill away. Take new pill from foil wrap. Cradle cat in left arm, holding rear paws tightly with left hand. Force jaws open and push pill to back of mouth, 
with right forefinger. Hold my mouth shut for the count of ten. Retrieve pill from the goldfish bowl and cat from the top of the wardrobe. Call spouse from garden. Kneel on the floor with cat wedged firmly between knees. Hold front and rear paws. Ignore low growls emitted by cat. Get spouse to hold head firmly with one hand while forcing wooden ruler into mouth. Drop pill down ruler and rub cat's throat vigorously. Retrieve cat from curtain rail. <laughs> Get another peel, peel from the foil wrap. Make note to buy a new ruler and repair curtains. Carefully sweep shattered figurines and vases from beneath the hearth and set to one side for blooming later. Wrap cat in a large towel and get spouse to lie on cat, the baby, to lie on cat with head just visible below armpit. Put pill inside, end of drinking straw. Force mouth open with pencil and blow down the drinking straw. Check label to make sure pill was not harmful to people. Drink one beer to take taste away. Apply Band-Aid to spouse's forearm and remove blood from carpet with water and cold water and soap. Retrieve cat from neighbor's shed. Get another pill. Open another beer. Place cat in cupboard, in, in cupboard and close door onto neck to leave head showing. Force mouth open with dessert spoon. Flick pill down throat with an elastic band. Fetch screwdriver from garage and put cupboard door back on its hinges. Drink beer. Fetch bottle of scotch. For a shot drink, apply cold claw press to cheek and check records for date of last tetanus shot. Apply whiskey compress to cheek to disinfect. Toss back another shot. Throw a t-shirt away and fetch a new one from bedroom. Call fire brigade, fire brigade to retrieve the bloody cat from the tree across the road. Apologize to the neighbor who crashed into fence while swerving to avoid the cat. Take last pill from foil wrap. Tie the little betard's front paws to rear paws with garden twine and bind tightly to leg of dining table. Find heavy duty pruning gloves from shed. Push pill into mouth, followed by a large piece of steak fillet. Be rough about it. Hold head vertically and pour two pints of water down throat to wash pill down. Consume remainder of scotch. Get spouse to drive you to the emergency room. Sit quietly while doctor stitches fingers and forearm and removes pilled remnants from your right eye. Call furniture shot on way home to order new table. How to give a dog a pill, wrap it in cheese. It just, I've tried to give so many cats over my lifetime a pill and it I, I usually give up after the first one because I find them all over, like, oh, I thought he for sure he felt swallowed that one. And then two, a day later, I find it sitting on the floor. Joy, 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 joy. I have decided that cats can live without pills. <laughs> and if they really need to take one, the veterinarian can give it to them. So, but... It, it really made me chuckle that I'm watching my cats, and they pretty well do whatever they want to do. And um, that's a, a really good way to live as a person, although it's nice if you take into account other people. But one of the things that I, I just found this, and it's a book called The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse. And just... To me, it might become my next favorite, um, my next four favorite allegory story. Uh, for sure, the Little Prince has been has held that place for a long time for me because there's so much wisdom in such a simple story, and this there's so much wisdom in such a simple story. Plus, the illustrations are adorable, and even the inside the front cover. 
you can see there's music. And, and the main characters are sitting on the treble clef and the bass clef on various notes. Um, so the main characters are the horse, the, the horse, the mole, the, the boy, and the fox. And they're sitting all over the heavenly place. And then, just so you think you haven't, have, haven't missed out, there's more music at the back. The story is adorable. And the story is about the wisdom in these four friends and how they got together. The, I was going to say that the horse was my favorite, and he certainly is favorite. But the fox is pretty, pretty much something too. And of course, so is the mole, and of course, so is the boy. So I guess all four are my favorites. The story is about the what are they what are they doing together? Why are they together? And it seems like the boy is lost, and it seems like he's looking for home. He's trying to find his way home. And meanwhile, he gathers um, wisdom from his four friends. He meets the mole first, and the mole's, um, what the mole loves is cake. And even though the mole loves cake and wants to share it, he eats the cake. If there's cake, he's going to eat it. He's a mole. He doesn't, he doesn't seem to, um, but he shares time. And they talk about freedoms, they talk about the... When, when they meet the fox, the fox is caught in a snare. And the fox says to the mole, if I were in the snare, I'd eat you. And the mole says to the fox, well, you are in the snare. If you don't get out, you'll die. And the mole, with his tiny little teeth, cuts through the wires and frees the, snob, the, sna the fox from the snare. The next picture we see, the boy, and the boy and the mole had been crossing a stream or river, and the mole fell in. And the fox had jumped in to rescue him. So he's, the mole is riding on the fox's snout. He doesn't eat the mole because now they're friends, because now they see each other more than just friends and enemies or possibilities of, of dinner. Mm -hmm. They see each other as um, ones that look after one another. The illustration right after the, right after the fox has been freed from the snare, the boy and the mole are sitting up in the tree and the fox has taken the fallen leaves and created a giant double heart on the ground. And what you see is the boy in the mall looking down at this love letter that the fox has just made. It's just adorable. But I did want to talk about, about this. The boy says, Sometimes I worry you'll all realize I'm ordinary. And the mole said, love doesn't need you to be extraordinary. We all need a reason to keep going, said the horse. What's yours? That's a, our question. We all need a reason to keep going. What's yours? And the fox says, you three. The fox says, you three. And the boy says, getting home. And the mole says, cake. <laughs> and then he says, I've discovered something better than cake. And the boy says, no, you haven't. And he says, I have, replied the mole. What is it? A hug, says the mole. It lasts longer. Uh -huh. A hug lasts longer. And then I just want to read the very last. He, they're in the storm, and he says, This storm will pass. 
after, and then after this storm, they're sheltering. And the boy says, we have such a long way to go. And the horse says, yes, but look at how far we've come. We have such a long way to go, but look at how far we've come. And, this. and then the, the horse, the, the mole says, what's your best discovery? And the boy says, that I'm enough as I am. That I'm enough as I am. And the boy says, I've realized why we are here. And the mole asks for cake. And the boy says, to love. And the horse says, and to be loved. The boy says, to love. And the horse says, and to be loved. What do you do when your heart's hurt, asked the boy. We wrap them with friendship, shared tears and time, till they make hopeful and happy, until they make wake hopeful and happy again. And the boy asked, do you have any other advice? And the horse says, don't measure how value, valuable you are by the way you have been treated. Always remember, you matter, you're important, and you are loved. And you bring to this world things that no one else can. What wonderful advice. Always remember, you matter. You're important and you are loved, and you bring to this world things no one else can. It's a wonderful little book of wisdom, and to me it gave me great joy to read it, to look at the illustrations, to read it again and see new, new things in the illustrations. They're just, um, some of them are watercolors, they all seem to be, the others seem to be pen and ink, but they're delightful. Um, if I could have, I would have bought a book for all of my friends. But instead, I'm just sharing some portions of the book with all of my friends. The boy, the mole, the fox, and the horse. You have heard me say it for 21 years. You matter. You are the one that makes a difference. So as we are coming into Christmas, we have prepared ourselves by remembering to bring hope and faith, to bring peace and let peace guide us, to bring love and let love open our hearts so instead of being grid-sized, mm -hmm. they're expanded to five sizes too big. Our hearts expand and are large. And now we bring the last quality that this week I invite you to bring joy into your life. When you look in that mirror, see a happy person. See the person you were meant to be. I was reading Dr. Ed Murgia's writing the uh, guides this month of December, and he's our spiritual leader, and his guides are really great. And one of them, he said, he, was, he heard some music maybe on the radio or whatever, and he just decided to dance. So he said, I dance wildly. It wasn't pretty. I danced wildly because the music just was there for me to dance. He said, and I looked in the mirror, and the face I saw was one extremely happy person. And so last night, I, <laughs> and this brings me, both things bring me great joy. I thought, well, I had my AirPods in my ears, so you can't see anything, you can't see that I'm listening to something. And I was playing some dance tunes, and so I started to dance. 
Well, you should have seen my cats. You should have seen my cats. They, they couldn't understand these movements I was making, and believe me, it also wasn't pretty, but they didn't know whether to let their eyes get bigger and watch or to run away. They finally decided to run away because every time I would make a move toward them, they thought their lives were endangered by this wild woman who they had never seen before. I'm sorry they had never seen it before, and that will be just the first of many times they see me dance without hearing any music. So, give yourself a goal this week as we go into Christmas to bring joy in everything you do. Everything, if you have to go to the grocery store, do, do it with joy. Do it with light and laughter. Sing to yourself, hum to yourself, dance along, skip along. Let your body know that you're grateful for all that it can do for who you are. Let your, let your face show your joy. When we were kids, we sang, I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. And then the other team would say, where? And we'd sing, down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart to stay. That's the joy we're going into Christmas with. And so it is. And so now I will pray. In this holy moment of right now, I bring all of the joy, all of the light, all of the goodness that I am, and I magnify it because it is the spirit within me that is radiating this goodness, this graciousness, this joy. I remind myself that there is only this one and nothing else, and it is everything. It is all around me, in me, as me, through me, and in and as and through each and every other being everywhere. It is that first cause that is bringing ideas, that is whispering, I love you. You are loved. It is that first cause that is opening your heart, keeping it open, bringing that joy bubbling up within you, and whispering, all is well and all shall be well. And this is what I know. I know that that attitude, that intention of bring, of bring the very best of ourselves to everything provides us with such grace, such ease, such wonderful experiences. God in me is having a great time when God in me is moving my feet, when singing my songs, smiling, laughing, being the joy I am. I know that this joy is sometimes quiet and reflective. And I know this joy is sometimes loud and exuberant. All ways are perfect. I declare for myself that this is a week of such great prosperity that it's prosperity plus because it's an opportunity to be loved as well as to love, to give and receive. I know that this is a week of of love and of light. I know that this love blesses everybody. And I know that this is a moment of well-being. I'm claiming wholeness for everyone. I'm cl claiming that all is well and all shall be well. Our bodies, minds, and spirit is one with the one. And we listen to the wisdom that is both inner and outer, and we, we do the right things for ourselves. 
as we move into this week, we do so with an intention that this is the very best Christmas ever, even though it's the most unusual. We bring that intention that something wonderful is happening and it's happening through each one of us. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be joy on earth and let it begin with me. It has begun. I release this word to the action of law. It is complete and so it is. And now, Jimmy Van. Continuing on uh, Dr. Heather's wonderful message about joy. We got to have joy. Uh, don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, that um, Dr. Heather has planned a gorgeous Christmas Eve service. So please, please tune in Christmas Eve. You're going to love it. All right, let's do a little more joy. What do you say? Joyful, joyful, Lord, we adore thee. God of glory, Lord above. Hearts unfold like flowers before thee. Hail thee as the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness. Drive the dark of doubt, doubt away. Give her all the mortal gladness. Fill us with the light. Fill us with the light. Fill us with the light.
thank you, Ben. What a great song. You've done it a little jazzier than we've ever done it. <laughs> Got a couple of important announcements. First of all, today at 2, the Animal Kinship Ministry is delivering gifts right out front. So it's a drive-by. You don't need to get out of your car. They come. They've, they've got clippers so they can hand you the gifts through your car windows. And it's going to be all is going to be well. And so it is. Jimmy Van, the Van family, has been doing something on Wednesday nights that all of you were invited to. And that is to tune in. Jimmy, who is it this coming week? Uh, the Van family and Alan Dale. The Van family in Allendale. Wow, it's going to be a wonderful Wednesday. And then, of course, Thursday is Christmas Eve. And so at 4.45, tune in on, if you're doing Zoom, it'll start at 4.45. If you're coming to Facebook Live or the other streaming, it'll start at 5. And that will start, but the, but the Zoom gives us an opportunity to say hello to each other and, and uh, dress up in our in our casual Christmas clothes and, um, and see each other. We're, it's a wonderful service that you will come to Christmas Eve. It's um, filled with the most wonderful music by the greatest singers, the greatest musicians that I know. And um, Reverend Judy and I will be helping to narrate. It's going to be a wonderful evening. And all of us can participate from home. Okay, um, I want to just thank everybody. I want to thank the, all the people who are in service. The people who are in service virtually, first of all, Pam Rock and Julie Isola, who do all of the comments and make things to make sure things are going well. The practitioners who are in service are there for you when you go after service for a prayer, and Lorianne Witte and Han Smith are two of the three, and if anyone knows who the third one is, Kathy Story. and Kathy Story is the third one. And um, so stop by, because that's an opportunity to get a private prayer just for you, and uh, always so good. So, and now I'd like to thank the people here. So we'll start, we'll start with, Start with Jimmy Van, our guest vocalist. We're so grateful, Jimmy, what a wonderful musician you are. We're so grateful. Diane happens to be married with someone in this town. Diane Keith Van, our music director and all round beautiful person. Behind her, our guitarist, Ed Cusby. And over to his right, Bill Dixon, with, he has two basses with him today, and, and his big bass, right? In front of him, David Page on drums. <laughs> Alan Dale, that are our song leaders to, today. Reverend Judy, who did the first part of the service. Thank you, Reverend Judy, always so wonderful. And then back in the sound booth, we have both Josh Schreiber and Dave Friedman. <laughs> Wave your camera so that everybody can see you. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. And then all of you at home, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for participating. Thank you for giving your attention, for giving your love. And now it's time for our, for our giving. And you have lots of ways to give. You can, um, you can use one of the electronic methods like uh, PayPal on our, uh, our website, or you can text to give, or you can send a check, or you can bring cash. If you bring it, there's no one here. The place is not open, by the way. We are following the rules. So we're only open by appointment. So if you're bringing cash, let us know so we can go open the door and let that tractor trailer in. <laughs> okay, let's, let's, uh, let's, with love, read our uh, offering affirmation together. My offering is my acceptance of God as the source of my supply and symbolizes my faith in the abundant flow of this supply. It's true and very true. I'm so grateful for that law and for the law. 
and for the presence that speaks so clearly everywhere. There is, there is hope at the end of the tunnel, and the tunnel is short. Okay, let's close with our closing song. We've got this beautiful new peace song that we're closing with, Peace, Peace, Peace. So if you'd like to, stand at home and sing. Christmas Eve.